welcome to Computer AF. I'm John Boydnot. I'm Ann Ahola Ward. Great to see you for our eighth episode. We're we're not accountants, so we're not good at counting. <laughs> <laughs> we always hire that part out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. We're very important and we're totally doing our taxes on time. <laughs> I I did get my California taxes back, so yippee D for me. And uh oh my god, we totally did have that that uh, that was one thing that I talking to you did help because I was concerned because the IRS sent me a letter. And um they're like the you... worst pen pal. They're like the absolute <laughs> worst pen pal you never want to hear from. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the thing is that I I think I did get an IRS letter like maybe 15 years ago or something, but I forget what it was about. And I was equally neurotic and scared about that then. But then when I got this IRS letter, you're like, oh, don't worry. They said, you reminded me of like Karen on Will and Grace. You're like, oh, don't worry. You're good. <laughs> you're fine. I get those every Tuesday or something, you know. And so it made me feel like I wasn't uh, destined to lose all my money in a horrific IRS audit or something. But Yeah. But it turns out that the deal with that was that um, just had a little bit of smidgen of information wrong on one of my forms. And um, it's usually, yeah, it's usually pretty boring stuff. that's administrative. One time I had a client that went under and reported that they'd paid us a significant amount more than they actually had. Like they owed us money and they reported that they'd actually paid it to write it off, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, less income as they went under and I fought it and I won. Nice. I also fought once um, a parking ticket in San Francisco and won that. So No way. It, yeah, no way. yeah. So it was like a bus had pulled behind. A bus was wherever, and it, there was like a zone that was kind of questionable what it was, and I was picking someone up. Um, I think one of my staff at the time I was picking up from a, an event, and um, or for, I forget what it was. doesn't matter. Um and the person before me, the parking attendant was like screaming at them, like, because they were clearly not moving, like, eh, it's rush hour Bay Area. Like, I'm just going to ignore you. I'm here in the car. I'm not really parked. And so I guess after the pad came out, the person drove off and I was right behind. I pulled up. They did the same thing to me. And I was like, see ya. And I, I, so I was only there like a minute um, because I quickly realized this person was irate. Well, they wrote it up with just my plate number. And so I fought it on the grounds of, well, there's a reason they don't have my uh, information. It's because I wasn't parked and I moved when asked to. And by the way, that person had yelled at me and I was uncomfortable and then boom, no ticket. And it was true. I mean, I was just like, someone was in the, in my windshield, in my face. I was like, I'm sorry. You're ha I was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just sitting here in my PT cruiser. Yeah. Oh, That's you, don't, you don't have that PT cruiser anymore. Do you still? Have oh, anymore? no. The PT cruiser didn't make the move. Um, yeah. She she had a good run. Yeah. Uh, but she was donated to the Make-A-Wish Foundation um, because I found them to be the least. Um, do they donated the most in terms of actual donations to charities paid out than like uh, Cars for Kids actually only pays out less than 20 percent really the actual, yeah they spend a lot of money on ads whereas make a wish like I, it felt like hey somebody's gonna get like a hot 500 dollars here like i want it to be a, a, a kid that needs something cool to happen and i'm i'm glad that um the p2 cruiser may she rest in peace was yeah uh, yeah my, i gave mine to cars for kids and i pro probably was worth like oh. 250. it was a, a 14 year old camry yeah. Oh, I remember that with the custom uh, rear view mirror, which I think was one of the first things about you that impressed me. Well, the, let's, to be honest, <clears throat> that it was amazing. Rear, hey, it's great. The custom rear view mirror I have in my, in my Toyota Prius now, um, it, it, because it's a transferable one that I bought at Pet Boys. And, That's fantastic. Um, <laughs> and it had the little glam lights on either oh, side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had never seen that before. And I remember it was like the first time you'd ever given me a ride. And I was like, <laughs> you, oh. could do that? you could do that. I'd never known anyone that had like upgraded a rear view mirror with like glam lights. And I was like, who are you? <laughs> who are you? You amazing man. And that was 10 plus years ago. 
you're making me feel like I really have done something with my life, that, I, that my life has been worthwhile, that I actually do cool things. Um, thank you. <laughs> you do, you do, but it's, it's random what people find impressive, right? But it's like, that was the thing that when we first met that I was like, yeah. yeah. It's a battery operated glam light rear view mirror that you, that I bought at Pet Boys probably like in night, um, oh God, maybe 2001. So and it's, it's probably, still kicking. It's, it's still, still kicking. kicking. Yeah. Well, all you got to do is put in a battery and it's it. But I haven't put a battery in, in a while. I should check. I think it's just a couple double A's or something like that. But it's like these blue flashies. And I just loved it when I saw it and I put it in. So I've had it in every car I've had since 2001. Yeah. <laughs> I love it because I it's big it. it's it's oversized it's also an oversized mirror which right. I totally come to rely on because and like if I take it off and you have the that tiny regular normal sized rear view mirror it's like I can't see anything so wow the things we're talking about today I was not expecting no hey. no but now everyone's gonna go out and get a new um they're gonna go get a new rear view mirror because they're they never thought to upgrade it or that they knew they needed to Right. It, yeah. It was, it's just a, it's a beautiful little, I think it was probably like 20, 30 bucks. It wasn't that much, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Apple, I think, we're going to start with think, Apple today. I feel like, robots? I feel like John is, John is to Elon as Anna's to Apple. I feel yes. like I've been kind of ranty on them and I think they're easy to attack because they're now the biggest, right? Yes. And, yeah, yeah. um, I think, there, so I'll say one positive thing before we talk about the negative. So the positive yes. thing is that they have made some moves forward in the right to repair movement. Um, so they've announced that they're going to make it easier to repair iPhones, which I think it's about freaking time. Like you should have the right to repair something instead of having to just throw it in a landfill um, or whatever happens to these things. Maybe they're stripped for parts by dealers. I don't know, but they're making movements towards being a little less evil in that regard, which I, I think is good because if you're spending over a thousand dollars on a phone, you should be able to repair it. Uh, you shouldn't just have to say, okay, well, this is garbage now and I'm just yeah. going to spend another thousand dollars. Like that doesn't seem right. So I was happy to see that they did that. Um, there are two other notable things that you and I discussed that I think are worth mentioning. Um, the other is that there's been an announcement of a spyware warning, um, apparently for people in like 90 something countries um, have found that iPhones are now getting targeted in attacks. Um, back in the day, it used to be something that would protect you. Um, you know, all those Windows viruses, you were like, oh, I'm safe, I'm on an Apple. But now that Apple's the big player, of course, there are attacks targeted towards Apple. And so um, people were notified over email and uh, they're obviously on it. So I'm sure it'll work out. But um, it's kind of scary that people in that many countries were targeted. Um, 92, wow. Yeah, 92. Um, and then the other thing, I think you you'd also read was um of a robotic nature yeah no the, the whole um so you know apple decided to put to bed their car thing and i actually worked at a tv station in san jose right near, i remember there's this thing where apple bought this piece of land in it's technically downtown san jose but san jose is like really absurdly large and has this like long extensive downtown and so they bought like a couple acres or more of uh, this this huge like complex or land and complex this was like back when i worked at nbc bay area like in 2008 or whatever and people are like oh apple might be doing a car and this could be related to that and then just sort of that slowly amounted to nothing over the years and then it finally got to the point now where they like officially kicked it to the curb and never going to do it. But what came out this sort of right around the exact same time was that they are working in their secret, top secret, I imagine like a little lab of little minions or something. They, they, um, they're coming up with, uh, possible robots that could follow you around the house. And, um, you know, I'll like, for, for me, what I think of is, um, the short circuit movie in the 1980s, which was politically incorrect and silly. Five is alive. Yeah. Number, Johnny, number Johnny Five. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, of so accents. You know, yeah, yeah. Was, yes, very, very bad stuff back then. But uh, using a, a, a Caucasian actor to play a, a, an Indian man and all of this. But, but, um, 
regardless at the time as a child i thought it was amazing and a robot and number johnny five was reading books very fast and so anyway maybe apple has something similar planned maybe we'll get a johnny five probably won't but that's i mean fine. i i have <laughs> definitely like an affinity for robots as you know but i just yes and bot we know yes this. exact exactly you're very <laughs> well on record as being a bot lady um i think that it's um it's something that people want but i i don't think that they're going to be clamoring to pay thousands of dollars for it given that it seems like a novelty to a lot of people mm. um there are certain robots in like airports those coffee robots that's cool yeah you know, those those seem to do pretty well i've only used one once and it was fine um you know if you have a problem you're kind of out of luck if you you know it tastes burnt or something you're just gonna have to drink it or not drink it but um what's the use case in the home that's what problem are we going to be solving if it's going to do my yeah. laundry i will pay infinite amount of money for that do my mm -hmm. laundry robot. but i just think we're years and years away from that but did you ever get a roomba did you get a roomba oh, for sure yeah, yeah, yeah. I, have, I have the the mop roomba which i love and you have an automated cat litter box don't you? Yeah, I also have the auto litter box. I also have a yeah. Furbo, which, you know, shoots treats at my cats when I'm gone. So Not a Furby, my... but a Furbo. Got it. Yeah, my husband often rips on me because we'll go on trips and then I'll like, this This literally happened. Um, we ate breakfast with our cats every morning when we were in uh, Vancouver uh, for a family wedding. Uh I was like, oh, let's turn on the Furbo. And, and so like my big Siberian came and um, he ate breakfast with us and I would shoot Aww. him treats and he would just sit there and we'd talk to him and he looked to enjoy the company. I mean, they had sitters, they had people coming in a couple times a day because you know how I am about my babies. But, um, of course, yeah. but this was before it, you had dogs. Yes. Yeah. So he's like, do you leave town and then just like think about the cats the whole time? I was like, who, are there people yeah. who don't yeah yep yeah. but the furbo is is sort of a robot and then it can rotate the camera you can rotate it with your phone and you can talk through it you can shoot treats um so i use mine mostly for cats but i have used it for dogs um and it's meant for dogs but whatever i think market opportunity missed cat people are just as nutty as dog people um but speaking of hey val bring me a cat <laughs> cat upon request i, I think, know yeah, well, i was gonna say like as far as robots go and the use case for robots you know they're another 80s robot for some apparently all the best robots were in the 80s was the rocky four film i think they uh -huh. got, they got a robot and like the robot would come in and serve tea and food so that could be a use case for the you know what robots could be good for yes uh, yes Apple finally does get around to putting them out Right. I think the the floor makes sense. I think, you know, maybe the yes. clean, cleaning the bathroom or certain types of services. Great. Cleaning seems to be the use case people get on board with. Yes. Here she is. Oh, oh is this Millie Philomini? Yes. Millie Philomini. This I'm is sorry. Millie Philomena Yvette Ward. Philomena. And please don't impersonate her now that you have her full. Don't don't steal her identity, Internet, now that you have her full legal name. Oh, uh, really feel a minute, yeah. little, nee, nee, nee. yes exactly sorry <laughs> she's got she's got a mustache um i mean all the great grand dames of the silver screen did yeah exactly before they saw oh their wedding. god she's adorable yeah. she's, she's like her luxury she's kind yes. of shy though. she's shy She's shy. I'll give you back to your hand. Oh, you know, it's stressful being so amazing. And, and I know I'm being a star of the show. Yeah. She um she loves water. She's weirdly into water and she will Cat like dump her water. Whole face. Yeah, she her whole face is wet right now. She will dip her whole head into the water. Like we have to have elaborate water fountains and things for her to entertain her and she'll like sit with them. She'll like meow at you if you come near it and then She'll meow at night and Val knows that that's his time to go put ice in the water. And then she bats around the ice. Well, you, yeah. you did have like a, a, a water fountain that uh, one of your uh, other cats from, from years gone by, who I always just yeah. called Fluffy. Um, yeah. Oh, Bucky. Yeah. Bucky. Yeah. Would stick 
her head, his head, his, sorry. Yeah. His, sorry, my bad, it's been okay. a long time. It's okay. Um, but the, I actually have pictures of him with water droplets all over his face. So I feel like this is a a, a, a recurring theme for your cats is that they yes. like take a dip. And it's usually her right side of her face too, which is also weird. She's like right faced. I don't know why. I don't understand. I just know that she's the fanciest girl. And oh, honestly, she's amazing. Yeah. The she's only like, the only girl that's ever made me jealous in my marriage. Sorry. <laughs> like a little uh, Elizabeth Taylor cat. Exactly. She exactly. She's gonna take a little nap right now. She's tired of us adoring her. She's I mean, over. yeah, obvious. Who wouldn't? Yes. Be? Yeah, in my honest. My big um, hound dog is turned one today. Really? He, yeah. Bosco, come here. I Mom's have to little boy. Yes. Well, we he's a rescue. And, and as you know, people who rescue like to just talk about how they rescued. That's what my brother pointed out when I first got him. He's like, oh, God, are you going to be one of those people? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I was like, yeah, yeah I probably is. am because he had, a, <laughs> yeah. he had a horrific early life. But this guy, Aww. oh my God, he's so. so oh, weird. I know. Let's look at his penis. Thank you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, look at him. He's so cute. Oh, and also the dog, too. This is, oh, <laughs> thank you, Val. I feel like um, Val today is like Jack. He's like Jack Hanna. Yes. Yes. <laughs> bringing, <laughs> bringing various, in the animals. various animals that are highly Happy dangerous. Birthday. Birthday. Okay, he's hating it. He's hating Millie's it. Just let him go back the on the couch. He's not. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's he's not a camera dog. But he um, we got him six months ago to the day the vet said he was about six months. So today I just picked as his birthday because it's the date of whatever. Might as and, well. Um, he is a foster fail. Uh, I got him in the house by saying we're fostering, and I meant it. But then, like three days later, I was like, "Sorry, yes. uh, I don't well, think this guy's going anywhere." Well, speaking of wild animals and yeah. you know where the wild things are, and or Dr. Seuss, or you know Lyrac, which oh like, yes, great transition. Which, way great to take transition. us back to the way to take us back to the topic. Yeah, Lyrac <laughs> is a new competitor to Twitter that sounds like a Dr. Seuss app. Um, my first gripe is going to go ahead and be that it is iPhone only, um, oh. which is not uncommon. Um, a lot of apps like to start that way because it's, you know, it, it's what a lot of the tech people use. Um, but their sort of, I guess, competitive edge is that they are planning on um, being like a live breaking news app, which we both know Twitter has a lock on. Like this earthquake in New York last week kind of re-reminded us right. that Twitter is still the breaking news app. So they're trying to break into that. But they also- I don't know, Lachlan was telling me this morning, he did not hear about OJ's death from Twitter first. Where did he hear it? Just uh, on WhatsApp. It's, it took like an hour Private to get Twitter. Private messaging, yeah. Private messaging. messaging. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> He's fine. He's fine. <laughs> we don't so have a special that. effect. No, no animals were harmed. In the yeah, animals. yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Thank Which you. Which cat was that, by the way? That was Lachlan. Oh, okay, you said the name. Okay, Lachlan. All right. Yes, yeah, Lachlan Fitzgibbon, um, which was a tribute to Buckminster. Fuller Ward, ah. because Fitzgibbon was the name of Buckminster Fuller's best friend. Oh, gotcha. So, gotcha. Yeah. So he's, he's, um, he's Siberian tabby. That's just absolutely, he's got a lot of feelings, he's but so of he's got a lot of feelings. He's a very feeling cat, but he's also just a hunk. Um, yeah. Look so, like a cat. Oh my God. Okay. This is the last one. The last one's coming in. Oh man. I know everyone's going to write. In there's a like, third cat. You have three cats. I thought you just had two. Yes. So this is Roxy retro ward. She, oh man. Uh, was originally adopted for my autistic Beautiful. brother-in-law, but unfortunately she, he wasn't able to care for her. So she had already been returned to the shelter three times. She escaped and lived in the woods for weeks. Yeah. And I looked for her every day for weeks. And then she's kind of kind of like sexy. Look at her. She's just yeah, wow. She's, she's a torty. Yeah. She, she was underweight and she was wily. And it took a couple months of TLC, yeah. but then she um she just has become the most luxurious. She and Millie are very fancy ladies and they love yeah. her. Yeah, but she just we felt it was better for her to be with us 
Um, it was a little much for him to take care of her. So, and she'd been returned to the shelter three times already. And I was not, I was like, nope. And yep. then when we found her, uh, Val was like, she's, she's not going anywhere. Yeah. I was like, All right, I guess we have a third cat now. We're those people. You guys can do that. Yeah. Two cats yeah. or three cats, two dogs. Yes. Yes. And that's it. We are done. That is no, it. I, I know you're cut off now and, and Val's I've been officially cut off. Warnings yeah. have been issued. Um, <laughs> apparently, apparently that's that's the upper limit on what a spouse will tolerate. It's reasonable. Yeah. It's reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. I think and they're all very loved and taken care of. So they're all very happy. Um Winston is hey, he's at no, he's napping. Just let him nap. Let him nap. Yeah, the yeah. good people of the internet don't oh too late okay we're just doing an animal winston. tour today this is my little winston oh uh, well you see yes yeah it wasn't Small he barking tickers. last week or the la in number seven show number seven wasn't he the one who was like yeah he uh, was triggered by the robot dog yes yeah yeah spencer spencer you gave that robot dog to i mean what were you thinking yeah i know i know i use it to entertain them no no <laughs> oh no yeah, the robot exactly. dog I mean, isn't that a great use of robots, though, by the way, is to have a pet if you can't have a pet or if you travel or you're Agreed. handicapped and you can't walk an animal. A companion of some sort. Yeah, take out litter. I mean, I got my mom a cat robot in the pandemic because she does not want pets at this stage in her life. She wants to travel. And in the worst of COVID, I got her a robot cat, which she was very offended by at first because it was kind of marketed towards people with dementia. So oh. Georgina wasn't a huge fan, but then all of a sudden the cat got a name, Oreo. Oh. And then I was getting pictures of Oreo on the couch. Doesn't Oreo look cute on the couch? And the cat had three commands where it would it would go back if you pet it, it would purr, it would meow, mm. and it would I mean it was pretty pretty good. So I mean I think if a robot is coming into my home at this point that doesn't clean, it's gonna be another animal because I'm not allowed live ones. By the way, with uh, Lear, with Lyrac, did how far did you get in the explanation of Lyrac before? Um, I probably should go back to that so we can stay focused. Here. Where were you at in it in the explanation? So of the, the real now. time real time news is their first value oh. add or whatever, which I think is good. I don't think they're there yet, but they're new, so we'll forgive them that. The other thing is Fetter, Fediverse. Uh, sorry, Fediverse integration. Oh Fediverse. yes is a portmanteau of federal and universe and so meaning a joining of two words which is something that i think people you know kind of get but kind of don't get it's basically you know it follows the activity pub standard and what it essentially means is that you are dealing with a network of social sites. So if mm. something is federated, like threads is federated, it means that it's part of a network that runs independently and is linked together. So you can take all of your information from one thing to the other. The idea mm. is that versus a centralized service like Facebook or a centralized service, um, like most social media where it just lives, everything that you have contributed to it lives in that one discrete universe activity pub standard and the fediverse apps link together and are independent so you own your content and that content can travel so that's a big oh. thing for people because when you leave a service a lot of people didn't leave twitter that wanted to because they had so much history there right so um the idea that you would own your own content and it's a, a form of ownership is very appealing to a lot of people uh, myself included. So they have out of the gate uh, said they have Fediverse uh, integration, which, you know, if that's actually true, or maybe it's in the roadmap, good for them. Mm. Um, they also claim to have better monetization for creators, real time news, uh, and then iPhone only. So I'm giving it a thumbs down uh. based on my initial experience. Um, but I'm not going to install it. Yeah. We'll see where it goes. I think just like any social network, like Be Real and all these new kind of fledgling sites or apps, your network has to join it or you have to be able to make new friends. Yeah. I mean, uh, my, my, my thing is that you just said it basically with all these fledgling little, you know, apps that have popped up. My, my phone is a graveyard of them. And 
one thing I will say about Meta is that it's it's managed to sort of stick in in my regular. I will actually share something. I'll see you there sometimes. You will have said something a couple yeah. times a week, which which frankly at this point. I'm not even able, able to really give Twitter as much attention as I once did, but I actually am going to write an, an article about how I still do use it. And there are ways that entrepreneurs can use it for my entrepreneur column uh, at some point soon here. It's going to come out. But um, but yeah, I guess my point is, is that what what will it take to make any of these stick? And so right now it's still just, you know, Zuckerberg and and uh, and Elon Musk, but the two social platforms that I'm, you know, still they right. Vaguely interested in, and but yeah, um, which reminds me of Instagram. I know there was an Instagram story that you wanted to mention. Um, we run out of time. We're, we're getting closer to running out of time. Yeah, there's so there's a Meta court filing this week uh, that showed that Instagram actually makes more money from ads than YouTube does, <clears throat> and that was kind of a shock to a lot of people because you would think YouTube, you know, would dominate there. So yeah. I mean, I mean, I think Instagram ads are killing it. I think the ads that I click on personally tend to be Instagram ads because they've done a really good job of not making them look like ads or feel like ads. Mm -hmm. um, and so I switched from my primary Android phone to putting Instagram on my iPhone. And I actually like that experience less because I thought I was spending too much time on it. Um, and so I've actually started winding down a bit on my Instagram time because the iPhone experience is not as good for me. And I don't know why mm. that is maybe because I just am more used to Android, but that's why I always carry two because I want to keep accessibility in the back of my mind. But I read a kind of a funny headline earlier today that I really don't get why it was a whole article, but apparently Megan the stallion mm. really likes Pinterest. Okay. And this was a TechCrunch article. And I was you like, used to live right next to Pinterest. You used to be like right next to Pinterest. Remember yeah. Your old house before your old, you remember? That yeah. Place? Yeah. That was, that was right there. And yeah. um, I was meant to go to one of their like events and never did. But um, I don't know. I didn't, I have to be honest. I didn't read the full article, but the article seemed to be basically that Megan the Stallion really likes Pinterest. So I mean, Pinterest has, you know, there are certain things if if I need to try and figure out the way I can place various furniture items on my porch. Oh, there's there's 487 possibilities on Pinterest, at least, you know, for me, someone who's not an interior decorator, a, a gay man who's not an interior decorator. Um, I'll, it takes me a long time to figure out how to place furniture and, and pick things to put on walls and stuff like that. I need to really think about it, et cetera. Pinterest is a great uh you know repository um it's a fun mindless sort of yeah. like vibe app which doesn't pressure you a lot to do things and that's yeah. nice i have a board that's been running for probably a decade that's baby animals uh with a group of friends i don't i actually don't talk to you that much not for any reason other than just we don't live in the same city anymore yeah. and it, it's just like a thing we all keep contributing to that's awesome <laughs> Yeah. Um, and so it's fun in that way, but I, uh, I think maybe now's the time where I, um, ask you the question, what have you been watching? Oh yeah. Yeah. We trade the transfer into our, our, uh, our media bric-a-brac segment. Yes. I would say, oh yeah. So Madonna's ex-husband, AKA guy, Richie, no one. Yeah. Anyway, um, the gentleman, this episode or this uh, TV show with 10 episodes called the gentleman um, on Netflix, uh, classic guy, Richie kind of jaunty humor, British gangster, uh, upper class, lower class, different accents with an American thrown in and an Irishman thrown in type type uh, uh, typical guy, Richie thing is actually really good. And I enjoy the heck out of it. And um, uh, would can't wait to see a season two. If there's going to be a season two, and um, really enjoyed that. Well, uh, what have you been watching? Um, well, I got down to the final like eight episodes of Law and Order uh, Criminal Intent. And so I had to uh, start looking for alternatives. And so uh, they did a big press splash and it caught my eye. I have been watching old episodes of L.A. Law. Nice. 
Oh, by the way, CSIs. Do you ever watch the CSIs? That's kind of, that's not your thing? No. Okay. Right. No, I don't know why. That that franchise I never could grab onto. So LA Law is a Stephen Bochco. Oh yeah, uh, Stephen Bochco. Er, yeah, early brainchild, a young David E. Kelly uh, yeah. left, took a leave of absence from his um, law career at a Boston law firm to write for the show and then never went back. So they had real lawyers involved in writing of the show and, and Dave, I think David E. Kelly probably got his start on the show. Um, I like it because first of all, it was forbidden for yeah. me to watch. It was deemed too adult because I was little when it came out. And, but I won't say how young because I'm not dating myself on the internet. Mm -hmm. And um, it's I just- you're like 26. Just so, yeah, exactly. It's just so kissy huggy. Like- Oh, really? you could really get sexy at work and in the la law universe like you were men were putting their arms around women they're planting kisses on each handsy. other it was right. handsy yes it was so handsy and yes yes uh they were all into it there was no like oh you can't do that at work it was like you know corbin bernson's character and his uh, secretary yeah. Roxanne, they're just like smooch, oh, smooching. Like, I'm like, was that William was, Shatner style or something? Yeah, I was just like, is this the was this what it was like to work in the 80s where everybody just was like, oh, it's work, let's get sexy. And so, from that perspective, it's just so different from how we are today in the workplace. I find it enjoyable. It is a soap opera, so obviously. Yeah they're trying to make it interesting but they is have LA law. law is this LA law this LA is law yeah LA law they did a and there's so much saxophone there's oh, so as there much should saxophone. Be. yeah it's like Ke the Kenny G era sexy yeah. jazz and the outfits yeah. and the shoulder pads so for me oh, yeah. it's, it's just like a delicious look back at my childhood and um again like I never saw it because whatever and then that was sort of I think the blueprint for law and order so in a way it was like mm -hmm. taking that step back mm -hmm. but they did a huge campaign because hulu got all the seasons so i'm not going to share uh. which, which season i'm in because it's embarrassing how much i've watched but you know like i put it on when I'm I'm doing season things. 11. <laughs> yeah well i put it on when i'm doing other things milling around the house or you know whatever it's just like comfort. Yes. it's like it's like the biscuits and gravy tv mac and cheese if you will Yes, exactly. A light carb. A light, <laughs> a light carb. carb. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's the kind of TV I'm into lately, and I don't, I don't really have any explanation for it other than that it's, it's like a soothing bomb. For yeah. Your, for, your for me, I've gotten. I forget. I I don't know quite how you would call it, but like I've sort of gotten past Netflix. There's nothing on Netflix I want to see right now, and then I've gotten past uh, Disney Plus. Disney Plus is less regular in the, and if there's not a star Wars show and there's not a Marvel show that I want to see, then it's you're kind of SOL on, on the, on that. And so I've kind of, and then Hulu, there's a couple things on Hulu, but I wasn't feeling it. So I went to Paramount because a good uh, friend of mine, who's almost like a family member lives in Santa Barbara, put me on her Paramount. And uh, so I'm on her Paramount, which has a little showtime in it. But I was scrolling down there looking for stuff and you got your Tom Cruise movies because it's Paramount and all that. But now nah, I saw them all already and I'm tired of him. So I scrolled down and there's The Whale with Brendan Fraser. And uh, oh my God. So I'm like, well, it, he didn't he win like the Oscar for this. I guess I better freaking watch it. So I started watching it and I'm gonna watch it, but it's definitely one of those things where it's just so serious yeah. that, that I made it through like 28 minutes. And I, that was kind of like, eh, I'm going to take a break and go to bed. <laughs> you know? Well, so. yeah, maybe it's like something that you wind down with. Um, yeah. I don't know if you're a fan like I am of Colin Farrell. He's yeah. Such a cutie patootie Irish, Irish uh -huh. man, but he's, he's, I don't know. I, I just, I very much enjoy him and he's got a new show out called Sugar it's on H. Uh, it's on Apple, right? I think it's on Apple. I fully intend on watching. Some of the reviews were mixed, but eh, who cares? Watch it if you're going to watch it. Yeah, um, I'll watch anything he's in if I'm being honest, just because I like him. Um, I think but... he's going to have also a Penguin show on HBO because he was he he played this version of the Penguin in the latest Batman film, 
uh, where you don't really even recognize him all that well. He's just such an actor, you know, he's just an actor. So he, he's, uh, he's great. I'll watch anything with him too. He's, you know, even that true detective that he was in, I liked that season. I'm like that one guy who liked that season because I, I yeah. like Vince Vaughn too. So yeah, but, yeah, that, that season was difficult. He was good in it. Um, I there were really, issues. There were issues. Yeah, yeah. The Gentleman movie, the original movie that yes, I never on, saw it. I never saw he, it. He was excellent in that. Uh, in Bruges, that that other like sort of dark historical comedy he was in that i can't remember the name of um, so, so banshees of isherin which is yes, that's exactly what i was talking about banshees of i need to yeah. see that still i need to see that um it's, just haven't it's gotten a, it. it's a weird dark historical comedy but hmm. it, like it it takes a while but then you're like Whoa. it's very different and um honestly i think it's it, it was a great movie i think it won awards and things because it was just yeah or out there. It was nominated yeah. Yeah, well, I guess this concludes the um, Colin Farrell fan club. I mean, computer age. <laughs> uh, well, at some point during the show, we always have to talk, at least to some extent, about some hot actor dude. Um, yeah. We may, we may do it more than once for different hot actor dudes. But yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, I can look. It's it's okay. Yeah. We can look free country. Plus, we've seen uh -huh. all of your animals today. That was a whole lot of fun. Yes, yes. Val um, Val made his debut on the show. That we was cool. Thinking, yes, we are thinking about having more guests. Um, mm -hmm. Totally maybe, working on that. Maybe Ben, right? Good old yes. Ben. Ben has, has said yes, I think. Um, Want to try yeah. and see if we can get Brian Solis on the show at some point? See, for, sure. First, got to try and get him to actually respond to my message saying, hey, I want to be friends. Hey, it's been a while. <laughs> no, Facebook did bring the poke back. You can always do a Facebook poke. Right? Oh, they brought, oh, I did not know that. I, they I never actually, so I read that they actually never took it away. They just kind of buried it. So uh -huh. this whole time we could have been poking each other. I always liked the Facebook poke. I thought it was like a harmless yeah. way to just be like, yeah, there's always like one or two friends who would just periodically poke me. And I'm like, uh, OK, yeah. All right. Just a nice, like innocuous way to say hey, I'm thinking about you, you know, and if you're in a dating situation and a way to kind of test the waters. Right. Sure. Sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. My dating life um, was over before Facebook. So. <laughs> Yep, I know. I'm not really good on those tips, by the way. <laughs> I, I actually, um, I actually had a friend recently who's who's dating. Um, show me, she's not an Austinite, but she was showing me the various apps. We looked at Bumble, we looked at Hinge, we looked at Raya, and I just was like, "Oh, I'm sorry that this is what you have to choose from." It was yeah. just like a lot of men that had babies in the picture which was oh confusing yeah. and then a lot of men that had pictures with other women which was equally as confusing and she was like thank you because apparently this is a thing people do in these apps i'm like why wouldn't it just be you and then there were like a segment of guys with funny hats and then a segment of guys with like funny beards and yeah like trying to kind of set themselves apart and and i just found it to be very weird and i had no envy of her situation but she's like yeah this is what it's like and i was like i'm really sorry it's a bit of a nightmare out there and you know it's um you know for gay guys it's not that much better between the hookup apps and the geolocation uh apps and you know just and then you know various ones that are a little bit um you know, have to pay money to kind of really get it. It, it look it's it's uh it's not easy out there dating has not gotten any easier over the decades that's for sure no and <laughs> there's many ways there are to communicate with people i think that equates as many people as many ways to feel blown off oh totally yeah yeah you know you know and that, that's, that's rough that's rough because it's like you can see when people are active when they're idle like ooh, ouch yeah, yeah. Lucky, yeah. Lucky not me. wanting to talk to me right now got it yeah yeah, exactly. Oh, you're checking your messages, just not responding. So I've seen friends wrestle with that and I really feel for them because, geez, how many forms of rejection does one need in a day? It's a um, new, brave, modern world of of uh, difficulty, even 
you know, worse than the difficulty was in the nineties or the early two thousands before all this. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I think I've mentioned this before, but like, I literally met my husband on Telnet. Yeah. So yeah. People now don't even know what Telnet is. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, it was a different time. But anyway, so thank you everyone for tuning in and indulging us in our animal yeah. explorations and our bric a bracs and our. Our digital, know. our digital, you know, basement with lots of dead computers in it. Yes. We're just sorting, <laughs> we're just trying to help everyone sort through the basement of, of computers. Um, We'll get our, we'll get through it together. Yeah. And our cats. Don't forget our cats and some, and two dogs. Exactly. Thanks everyone. Great to see you. Have a wonderful everything.